the the nice guys I talk about it operates like I said from what I call covert contracts is they're if then propositions and there's three primary covert contracts of nice guy syndrome. This be true for guys or girls. One is that if I'm a good person, then I'll be liked and loved. Uh, for most men that off, also manifest and the women that I desire to, ha to have sex with will want to have sex with me. If I'm a good guy, they'll, they'll want to be with me. Second covert contract is that if I meet everybody else's needs without them having to ask, then they will meet my needs without me having to ask. Now, as you can imagine, that, that's not a very functional way of, of relating to other people. Third covert contract of nice guy syndrome is if I do everything right, then I'll have a smooth, problem-free life. And this is kind of a-, a That's what gets me, I think. Yeah, I do too. I fall, hey, hey, I did everything right. How come you're upset at me? You know, you, you, should, you should do nothing but make my life easy and praise me and appreciate me. I'm the same way. So- but it's a very immature, Peter Panish. oh, if I get everything right, everything in my life will work well. But a couple of problems with that is nobody ever gets everything right. We're human. <laughs> we're, 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 we're flawed. You know, we're imperfect. And the other part of that is we don't live in a smooth, problem-free, perfect world. We live in a chaotic yes. world. And, and accepting that the world is chaotic is one step towards maturity, because then we quit trying to manage the chaos. Um, and so going back to your question, then, if you are not operating from covert contracts, if you're not giving to get, and in the way I often put it, if you're not giving from an empty bucket, we're most codependents, nice guys, nice girls are, because we're not good at making our own needs a priority. Our bucket's empty. We give to others, hoping that okay. they will then give back, which means that our bucket doesn't usually get filled. And we often have a lot of guilt around taking good care of ourselves or meeting our own needs or making ourselves a priority. When, when I tell nice guys, uh, you need to make yourself your number one priority in life, they get a deer in the headlight look. Oh, no, that'll make me a bad person. That'll make me like my father or all those jerks I've heard women complain about. But no, the a true sign of maturity. In fact, I think the number one characteristics of a mature adult is a person who takes full responsibility for both their actions and their needs and their wants. Now, we can't get all of our needs and wants met by ourselves. Now, we can get a good start at it. Uh, we can get up and drink water and do some exercise and do some meditation. We can do a lot of things to nurture ourselves. But we need a lot of people around us. We need a posse. I call these cooperative reciprocal relationships. We need a lot of both friends, professionals, practices, different things that fill our bucket. From there, we can give from the overflow. And we can, we can be generous and we can bless other people's lives. And we can give to them what they need to receive, not what we need to give out of our covert contract coming from a place of emptiness. So to come back to your question, if you are taking good care of you, which is essential if you're going to give to anybody else, if you're filling your own bucket in a, in a consistent way, that makes you feel loved and lovable. And then you can give from the overflow with no strings attached, no covert contracts, and give to people what they most need to receive, not what you most need to give to get your covert contracts met. So, yeah, you know, uh, I, I think I heard you mention you have a young child. Um, yes. Okay. Scarlett, she's, she's almost four. Okay. So here's an example of, of what I call two levels of differentiation. First level of differentiation is where you ask yourself, what, what feels right to me? What do I want? What, is, what do I need? What's important to me? And then you take action to, to do that. And again, you do it even when you experience the resistance of neurotic guilt or change back from the people around you. Now, there's a second level of differentiation that can only occur after you've uh, achieved first level differentiation. And then you can also ask, what is in the best interest of the people I love? What is in the best interest of the planet that I live on? Right. And, and now from that place, you might actually make some sacrifices. You might actually put yourself second in order to put somebody you love first that needs to be, especially a child or uh, an ill parent. My, my mother's 86 and had a stroke coming up on three years ago. She lives alone, she can still drive, but she's fairly disabled physically. And, you know, I, I live in Mexico. She lives in Seattle. I get up there at least every other month. And people go, oh, you go up to see your mom a lot. They go, yeah, I go up because she lives alone. You know, she, she doesn't have a lot of social connections. She can't get out a lot. 
Um, I, I go up, make sure, you know, it's her during COVID, you know, her pantry is well stocked and, and that she doesn't have to do a Costco run by herself. And so I can take care of my mother in differentiated ways. Now, as a child, I tried to take care of her in codependent ways because I thought my my uh, my ability to thrive and survive depended on me sacrificing me to take care of her. I'm now a differentiated adult and I can make sacrifices or I can go out of my way to do things for her.